Welcome to the Institute, Louise. It's great to have you here. It's really good to be here. Um, I know that tonight you're going to give a keynote speech and there'll be lots of questions on the multiple topics, but I suppose it would be great just to have a few words from you already on how you see the International Criminal Court and the future of international criminal justice. Well, I think I need to just start with the premise that, as you know full well, law and legal institutions take a long time to mm. develop. And I think if we keep that in mind, I think we can situate the International Criminal Court, which is a 20-year-old institution, uh, in, I think, a course that I believe is irreversible, but has been, I think it's fair to say, maybe slower than expected or hoped. Um, I think it will find its stride, but currently I think there's been tremendous pushback um, and a lot of challenges and a, and a lot of failed expectations in a sense, particularly mm. because of its lack of jurisdiction over Syria, for instance. Right, indeed. So there are a lot of inherent problems. Maybe turning away from the new institution to something which in relative terms is a bit older, human rights. I mean, you were High Commissioner for Human Rights. It's been a while now, but here in Geneva, there's a bit of a mood from time to time that we're experiencing not only a backlash against international criminal justice, but a backlash against the whole idea of human rights. Can you give us some words of hope on human rights? Well, first of all, I think that mood is accurate. It reflects overwhelmingly a mood of, not despair by a long shot, but some surprise in a sense that the mm. trajectory that seemed so promising 10 years ago has slowed down. There's been again a lot of pushback. There's been the emergence of movements that are hostile to the mm. entire project. Uh, it is so well anchored, I think, um, in our universal norms, institutions, I have no doubt that the international human rights agenda will not only survive but thrive, but it's going to take uh, an enormous amount of efforts at this present time, I think. Right. I, I think that's absolutely right. I suppose the third topic or area where you've been so busy is migration. Um, you know, as you step down from this important post, again, it doesn't look Great, not the work you did, but necessarily, but the point is the situation in the Mediterranean, at least, which is what people here focus on. Can you, a again, give us a bit of an overview as to where we are with migration? Well, again, I think, you know, human mobility has been historically a topic to which the United Nations member states were allergic. Mm. There was n no opportunity to discuss that, except with respect to the Refugee Convention, which, of course, is a pillar of international humanitarian law and so on. So the mere fact that in 2016 there was an impetus to have a conversation which led to the adoption in December of last year, just a few months ago, of the Global Compact for Safe, Orderly and Regular Migration, that is already, in a sense, nothing short of a miracle in the current world political climate. So it's a blueprint, it's not a binding legal instrument, but it's a political instrument uh, to cooperate, which I think will serve the world community very well in the decades to come. So contrary to what the impression we may get from the press in terms of norm setting and development of good practices, we have surprisingly achieved something in this otherwise hostile climate. Well, thank you for that very <laughs> realistic yet partially optimistic uh, overview and we're very much looking forward to hearing you this evening. Thank, thank you. you. It's a pleasure to be here.